how much are you seeing this whole wave of interest in artificial intelligence benefit your run rate at the moment with Evie? Yeah, definitely. It's a great question. I mean, we started Evie because of the proliferation of AI in healthcare, hmm. right? Where you're seeing that so many companies are finally leveraging data to make the healthcare experience more effective. But what we've realized is that given what you just said, that women weren't even in clinical research until 1993, there's so much missing data on the female body, right? And if we're gonna train all these algorithms to help us understand what's going wrong at the doctor's office or what's most likely to help us, but it didn't include anyone who looked like you and I, who's to say that's gonna be effective on us? And so we really set out to say, what would it look like to build a precision healthcare platform that was actually centered on the female body? What are the data sets that are missing in our understanding and ability to do that? So almost you call yourself well, a healthcare company more because you must have to go around getting all the samples and the data. I mean, yeah. how does one source that to be able to then run your AI models on them? Yeah, great question. So we actually run um, a precision female healthcare service and we're specifically focused on the vaginal microbiome because it's actually the leading reason that women go to the doctor in the US. Um, it, and when we go to the doctor, we're more likely to be misdiagnosed than correctly diagnosed. Mm. And we're more likely not to get better than we are to get better. And so we built a platform finally leveraging technology and data to better characterize what is actually going on for somebody. So we have first of its kind precision testing. And then we actually use data, technology, AI to understand and what's most likely to help that specific person. Because it turns out, obviously, no two people are the same, no two women are the same. Um, and so by actually delivering much better care that's powered by data, we're actually gathering the data on the back end to be able to enable a much better future of women's healthcare. I'm kind of still stuck on the fact that more women get worse than get better. Yes. <laughs> Fair. Um, how, who is there for adopting this? Who are you managing to get on board from the healthcare yeah. community to want to start to use this within not just trials, but in real world application? Yeah, such a good question. So I think the first person who's always the most motivated to help things get better is the patient, mm -hmm. is the person who's suffering. And so what we've seen is that there's so many women who are suffering with symptoms, not getting answers, not getting better. And they're extremely excited to have new data on their own bodies, right? They're trying to understand. And I think we're seeing this in many industries, right? Where consumers are finally being able to take control of their health because of the proliferation of technology that's made it more affordable and possible to even happen. And so we find that first, it came from the women, the women who were like, we demand better answers. We're gonna buy this with our own money because we want to know what's going on. Mm. And what we find is actually that 98% of our members actually choose to have their data become part of research. And I think that speaks so deeply to the frustration that we've felt in the healthcare system and the desire for our, our daughters to have a better experience. So we started very much with women. And now, finally, a couple of years later, we're really seeing a lot of excitement from doctors, whether it's PC PCPs, OBGYNs, doctors who frankly are also frustrated that they don't have better tools or better information to help their patients. So when people are saying, well, the existential risks, the cyber risks, the risk concerns around AI, but then we try and look for really where we're going to see dramatic change. You'd say healthcare is sort of absolutely. first and foremost out there in terms of industries that are going to be disrupted by this. I think absolutely healthcare will be disrupted by AI in so many ways, not only in the ways that we better diagnose people, that we help them come up with better treatments. I think at the end of the day, how can you possibly in the human brain understand every single measurement of what's going right and wrong in your body, understand what disease that's most likely to be, and then how you're going to fix it. I mean, it's an impossible task for the human brain. Um, and given the fact that every person is so, so different. Um, but I also think it's really important that it's done carefully and done mm. well, right? And we think about who, what data are we using to train this algorithm? Does it include the people that we're then going to use this algorithm on? And so I think it's very important that we put up the right guardrails, we ask the right questions, and that we don't just assume that AI that's well-designed means it's going to be well-designed for healthcare. And I think healthcare needs its own set of rules and thoughts as we bring this revolutionary technology into the space so that we don't actually widen the gap that already exists. So who's thinking about that? I mean, already you've captured the imaginations of, of VCs, you're clearly managing to get into the world of healthcare. What about the administration? Are you having discussions? Yeah. I mean, are people coming to some of the startups and indeed the bigger companies within AI to think about rules, guardrails? safety. Yeah, definitely. I think one, the companies, hopefully this time around are being a little bit smarter about this. I know it's something we think about all day, every day. Maybe that's because we're a female leadership team, but you know, it could just be because we're a, a company started today. Um, I also think that we're seeing that regulatory bodies like the FDA 
are looking. They're interested. They want to understand what the new technologies are and how to set up guidelines. They have a variety of working groups with companies, with industry, um, and also with academics and ethicists. So I have hope that we will build the right guardrails and that when we do that, we will unlock an age of precision medicine where women finally get better, right? Where right now we're diagnosed on average four years later than men across over 700 diseases, right? But imagine if we could actually look at the data in your body and understand what's going on. Like that gives me a lot of hope.